All right. Well, thank you very much, Jamie. And thanks to those of you who have logged in. The uh, genesis of this subject kind of grew out of a meeting we had in Dayton, Ohio. So Chief Hubbard uh, and a few of us were working on the acquired structure platform for ISFSI. And we started talking about you know, the many, many tasks that each and every one of us have in front of us every day and different strategies for dealing with things. And I either need to uh, uh, thank or, uh, or criticize Chief Hubbard for throwing me under the bus and saying, hey, why don't you share a little bit about how you've been able to, to do some of these things that uh, we've gotten done. So uh, long and short of it, uh, pretty short presentation, mostly just talking through you know, a system of managing time. It's not the system, it is just a system. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, just as a uh, point of information, my email's up there. If you want any of this information, have follow-up questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to me and I will get right back with you. So with that, um, let's talk a little bit about why time management is important. Uh, when I look through the attendee list, I see a few uh, names in there, and I certainly see some names in there of some people that are, are very busy, some people that have promoted uh, a lot of training chiefs, a lot of people that have many, many demands on their time. I think each one of us could make a slide like this that shows the number of organizations, the number of activities that continually uh, chip away at the, that precious and limited amount of time that we have. You know, if I did a, a quick tour around here, certainly, you know, we have the, the response side of the world. Uh, in fire and emergency services, you know, that takes precedent. And even if we are in chief officer position or training officer positions, you know, our, our day can be transformed uh, with a single tone. Uh, in my past, I've got a little bit of a history as a fire marshal. Uh, so again, I'm one of those people who tends to keep certification. So I still have, you know, continuing education to keep my ICC certs up. Uh, my friend Forrest Reader uh, and Tim Sandelback convinced me to sign up for an Ironman in 2015. Uh, and again, that's quite a time commitment. Nothing anybody can't do. It's just a matter of, of schedule and the time in there. Uh, the central logo there, my fire department, certainly you know needs to take precedent over these other collateral duties. We've got you know state chiefs, some arson investigation, uh, uh, the uh, academic world, both as a student and as a teacher, try to stay active in the National Fallen Firefighters. Association, as well as you know, maintaining some volunteer status. So, with that, you know, certainly there are plenty of demands on our time, and you certainly didn't log on to listen to me talk about uh, how partitioned my time is. But I think what we're interested in is what we're going to do about those demands. So, as I said earlier, this is just a system for getting things done. It's certainly not the system. Um, and it certainly probably doesn't match your system. But my hope and desire today is that you can take, you know, at least one of these uh, concepts or ideas or ideas that are thrown out from the audience and regain a little bit of that precious time that, that all gets uh, distracted by us. So the system or the way of managing things needs to increase focus. Um, there's a lot of research out there that says multitasking uh, doesn't exist. You know, there certainly is, is gender differences, and you know, the research says that women are much better at multitasking. Men tend to be able to, uh, you know, partition things, and we may think we're multitasking, but actually, you know, we're we're focusing uh, repeated um, moments of our time. The other thing that's important is to you know reduce distractions. I'm going to throw out a few ideas and a few you know technological advances that are out there that can really help to increase that focus time. And I'm one of those you know guys that really needs to shut the door and get stuff done. I've worked in shared offices with people, and you know not that I'm an eavesdropper, but certainly when I hear a conversation going on in the background, it distracts me from my work at hand. So again. Some people can very easily separate, you know, radio traffic.
topic, a, a background conversation, and the work they're doing. That's not me. I'm, I'm pretty much one of those guys that needs to uh, reduce distractions to increase performance. Ultimately, what we want to do is increase our results. We want to uh, be effective and efficient with our time and get things done. And when we're not, that tends to frustrate us. Uh, a lot of type A personalities, OCD, in the fire service and emergency services. And if things don't go exactly as planned, oftentimes we get frustrated. So I wanted to talk a little bit just about the how. Again, as I said, these are my opinions, my system, certainly not. Uh, I'm not preaching or, or suggesting that these will work for you in whole, but as I said, I hope that there's uh, one or two nuggets that you can pull out of this. And then I uh, certainly a disclaimer on this. This is, you know, how when Chris and I were talking about it, how I explained that uh, that I did, I parse things up, and he offered some ways of how he structures his day to be effective. Uh, both of us certainly vary from plans. We certainly get distracted, and shiny objects tend to to roll across the screen and change how we're doing things. So let's go ahead and jump into the content here in just a minute, but uh, if you think about that OODA loop, a lot of uh, research, a lot of discussion out there based on John Boyd, who was a uh, Korean war pilot and became, uh, you know, kind of a mentor in military strategy, and he came up with that term, the OODA loop, and that, you know, that came from dogfighting and from uh, uh, combat air missions. His concept, you know, was to observe, gather that information, to orient, you know, find, you know, uh, situational awareness, as Dr. Gassaway would say, but to, uh, you know, orient as to, you know, what the threats are, what the um, uh, abilities you have are, and then to come up with a course of action, and then to execute that action. So kind of underneath all of this is that situational awareness or that, that OODA loop. So again, I'm not a uh, certainly not a preacher. Um, the concept of, of of using the Ten Commandments is one that we talked about. We also talked about you know everything I needed to know about the fire service I learned in recruit school. There's different ways to parse this, but essentially, uh, we went ahead and chose these Ten Commandments. So with that, you know I'll probably spend three or four minutes on each one of these slides, and if you do have a question. Uh, let me know. I'll kind of wrap those up at the end. But I think most importantly, you've got to put first things first. You've got to remember, you know, who pays your paycheck, who makes that deposit in your checking account every two weeks. And that really takes priority over many of the other items that you can do. You can, you can have a very active, you know, volunteer side of the world. You can be in academics. But as you know, they taught us in executive fire officer, first and foremost, you have to survive. So I think you know, placing first things first, those elements that are urgent by command, when the boss um, calls you into the office or uh, sends you a note and says, hey, this is a, this is a priority, this needs to get done, you tend to um, push that to the top of the list. And again, when I talk about uh, work uh, in this presentation, we also have families and personal lives that we need to balance that with as well. So again, a, a concert for your kid, uh, a track meet for your son or daughter, a soccer game uh, for a niece or nephew are also those elements that become urgent by command and need to make their way into your list. Uh, so again, uh, not that your family is your boss or your uh, or anything uh, along those lines, but certainly your employer and your family, those elements need to be pushed to the top of the list. And you've got to be careful because there's only so much of you. You only have so much time that you can dedicate. So I would offer that you need to be cautious about committing to those elements beyond your job description just because it sounds interesting and it, it catches your interest before you commit to those, make sure that it's something that you can pull off. 
think the last thing you want to do is let somebody down or let yourself down. Uh, some of my friends um, in the fire service have talked about that next bullet point, that you don't take every baby at the orphanage door. So just because it's a problem, just because somebody brings it up, that doesn't mean necessarily that it's your problem. Many of us are in training, and that seems to often be the default answer. It's a training issue. And I would encourage you to, to do that research and find out if it is a training issue before you start um, owning that problem or, or correcting that problem. And then don't forget about the favor bank. Uh, we all help each other out. Uh, those are the kind of things you need to do before you need them. So I would encourage you to make frequent deposits in the favor bank. You need to balance that with you know, distractions, staying employed, and, uh, and all of that. But don't be afraid of uh, doing something for somebody with the, with the knowledge and expectation that it'll come back to you. Um, the next one would be, thou is no good if thou is not healthy. So you certainly need to, when you put first things first, put yourself at the top of that list, your mind, body, and spirit. Um, I probably learned more about this from my friend uh, Forrest than anything else. You know, setting a daily time for a workout, uh, setting time to, you know, I've, I've got the luxury or the curse of a, about a half hour commute to get to work. So I tend to have some time to sort things out, plan out my day, uh, consider items to, on my drive to and from work. But uh, setting aside, you know, that quiet time when you can sort things out. Uh, so you certainly have to take care of yourself and I'll offer up just a couple of, you know, uh, cheats to make this work better. You know, there's, like they say, there's an app for that. There's a free app called Training Peaks out there. And uh, if you sign up for that, basically you can uh, enter your workouts. You can spend a lot of money and, and, you know, buy workout plans that do that. But you can enter workouts. There's plenty of free ones out there that you can put in there uh, where you can track your work. And essentially what it does is send you an email, you know, Set it up, and it gives you the you know the task for the day. When you, uh, when I was you know training and prepping for some of the endurance races, the last thing I wanted to do was bonk or or not be ready or to end up you know not finishing a race. So you take things very seriously when they come across uh, your radar screen. And that you know, with between Fitbits and Garmin's and everything else, you know you don't need to monitor. Uh, your heart rates would by taking a pulse. There's there's an app that does that. Uh, My Fitness Pal is a great way to, you know, track your uh, calories and nutrition and all of that sort of stuff. And then don't forget about your mental health. You know, in the fire service, we're we're discovering just how hard this uh, profession can be mentally. So you know, take time to do what's happy and make sure that when you take a vacation the time away truly ends up being time away. Uh, number three would be to use your triage skills, thou shalt triage. So when we learn start triage, you know, we talked about identifying people that uh, uh, weren't going to make it as far as, you know, the last thing we want to do is, is sacrifice salvageable patients for a patient who is not going survive. I propose to use the same sort of uh, triage skills when you size up uh, the body of work in front of you. Uh, like I talked about the, you know, the orphanage door, don't confuse the urgent with the important. So the, you know, just because something is urgent or something ends up uh, with a red exclamation mark next to it in your inbox uh, doesn't mean that it's important. So make sure that you are crystal clear about what's important to you and what's important to your, you know, your body of work. Uh, second would be to take a page out of Gordon Graham's book and figure out if you've got discretionary time. If you've got time before you make a decision, if you've got time before a task is due, uh, use that time to, to 
help you make the best decision and best action that you can. And then also while you're triaging, you've got a, a, a solid body of work. You've got years of experience that let you know how long your gut tells you uh, time uh, things will take and the resources they'll need. It's a little like a remodeling project if you've ever done any construction, though. It usually takes you know, uh, quite a bit longer and costs a bit more than you expect. But try to give yourself, you know, in that triage session, just a quick, uh, quick estimate of what you think that your time and resources would be. So if something comes up on your list as black, something that's dead, something that is uh, beyond your control, uh, I encourage you to leave it. That's not the best use of your time to, to try and revive that project that, that has died, to look at the, um, you know, those, those elements that aren't going to pay benefits. Uh, same thing with the walk at, walking wounded or the, the green. If you've got those items, you know, that uh, can take care of themselves, that your peers can take care of, that you can delegate out to your, you know, company officers, to your crew, depending where you are, you know, in this service, there's, you know, we always do things as teams. There's ways to delegate those things out and, and to monitor how they're doing. Uh, when things become more urgent, the yellows and the reds, they need to end up in a in a proactive plan. We're going to talk about that in some of these later commandments. Uh, but you do often have those red items, those ones that require you know that life-saving action and require your attention right now. So again, if you want to use um, you know a, a paper list and uh, three-color highlighters, if you want to use click bins that's got the three colors on it, um, if you want to use a series of stars or check marks, whatever your system is, as you start to triage and go through things, I encourage you to group it into that, uh, you know, green, yellow, and red, or the, you know, the from the least important to the most important, so you know what to dedicate your time to. The next would be thou shalt make and maintain an e-list. I'm a big checklist guy. Um, again, I still tend to have a few sheets of paper on my desk. But uh, one of my uh, colleagues here has really helped me to uh, come into the you know 21st century and start to do things electronically. Uh, the nice thing about these living e-lists or these documents is that you have instant access. You're always you know we're always connected to our phones and we always have a way. Uh, to take a look and check in on these lists. Again, you've got to balance and not uh, be so distracted or so enamored with the technology that you're, you're staring at your phone all the time. But I encourage you to take a look at some of those that are out there. You know, Asana, uh, Slack has some really strong apps like the To-Do Bot that helps you to put these elements in there, these lists, and then to uh, prioritize and, and monitor. I know even Outlook has a you know a list function in it. iCloud has a way to have a collaborative list uh, that we've used quite a bit with ISF Sci. And then I'd also encourage you to you know start and end your day with a list. Way back in the 20s when they were you know talking about improving productivity in factories, they did this Hawthorne experiment with basically they compared uh, productivity based on lighting levels. They came up with this thing called the Hoff Hawthorne effect. And it didn't matter whether they you know, increased the light or decreased the light in the factory. What actually mattered is that people were paying attention to that. So that Hawthorne effect, uh, I would offer that if you check in uh, with your list at least morning and night and you monitor and are aware of what is on your list, uh, that you tend to get more done. Then I think we can take a page out of our uh, law enforcement brothers and sisters book and just concentrate what's on the top of our list. You know, the FBI doesn't put out the top 100 most wanted criminals. They do a top 10 list. And again, your number may be seven. Uh, you know, could be three to seven with an optimum being five. 
it could be 10, it could be 15, but uh, come up with your, you know, your magic number of how many items you're going to keep on your list at a time. Uh, based on that list, uh, the fifth commandment would be thou shalt set and maintain a schedule. So again, you can use plenty of those e-apps, those uh, applications out there. You can use a simple Gantt chart. Uh, you can use sticky notes. You can use whatever works. <clears throat> but you need to put together some sort of a schedule or a timeline of how you're going to get these things done. So the benchmarks that you're going to need to plug in there would be that you need to to set the deadlines for those. You need to be able to set you know, due dates. When you're uh, writing a dissertation or you have qualifying exams for an advanced degree, uh, that date is set in stone. It becomes very uh, visceral and very clear to you when that needs to be done. So those are those red letter days that end up in your calendar. Um, look for those tasks that fill two buckets. I'd encourage you to double dip. Uh, an example of this is when I was going through a statistics class. I was also a training captain at the time, and we were doing this exercise called field day, where we basically um, began to uh, take a look at uh, crew's performance on different drills. You know, some of them were the 14 NFPA 1410 uh, drills for initial emergency scene activities. But we've, we expanded that quite a bit. And so what I was able to do is take that work time uh, in analyzing that data and double dip and, and get credit for that in my statistics class. So again, not uh, stepping work, but combining and being synergistic about getting things done. So look for that overlap. Look for those items that, that fill those two buckets. Um, Outline those critical paths, as I said, set the deadlines and due dates, whether you use a wall calendar, whether you use Outlook, uh, whether you use sticky notes. Make sure that you are crystal clear on when things need to be done. And then I'm a big fan of early. Uh, you know, schedule those important tasks and those important items either early in your day or early in the process. And then I'll Certainly, you know, once you set a schedule, uh, don't spend your time making excuses or compromising. It was put to me one time, you know, how do you accomplish, you know, a complex task? Well, you start at the beginning and, and you finish at the end. Or how do you finish an Ironman race, basically? You, you know, you show up at the start line healthy, ready to go, and then uh, once the tone goes off, you get started and then you finish at the end. Number six, I think, is really important. Uh, when you talk to a lot of people, they always say, boy, if I can get past this next deadline, if I could just get through the 4th of July, everything is going to be good. It's going to be smooth sailing. It's going to be calm water. We're typically not that type of person. If you ask us if we would rather go for, uh, and when I say us, I, uh, us in emergency services, you know, whether we would go uh, on a boat ride or whether we would rather uh, take a kayak through whitewater, I think almost to a person, we would prefer the whitewater. We'd like that enjoyment. If you think about why you got into this job, you selected this job and I selected this job because it's different every day. It's not mundane. Um, even though, you know, much of what I do today revolves around a desk and a computer, uh, I certainly love and respect and know that you know that next tone may may dramatically change things. So I would encourage you to try to, even though it seems stressful, try to enjoy the white water. Look for uh, you know your ability to to problem solve and to uh, to navigate through that. You know, uh, false summons, calm water, and the Yeti are things that people talk about all the time. They talk about, you know, making it through the 4th of July or making it to the next step. Uh, but try to enjoy the white water. You know, as uh, they've told us in some 
great baseball movies. You know, it's the heart that makes it great. And stress helps to motivate people. And again, I don't mean over stress. I mean that, uh, you know, we, we tend to be that type A personality that a little bit of push uh, goes a long way with us. Uh, this item certainly will show my age. Those of uh, the millennials that are viewing probably uh, have no idea what I'm talking about. But uh, Dr. Pepper, and it was even actually before I was uh, cognizant of Dr. Pepper, but their ad campaign was 10 to and 4, kind of those union break times uh, during the day. They wanted you to enjoy a Dr. Pepper, you know, on your breaks. So I would encourage you to, you know, pepper your email. Take a few times during the day, and again, it doesn't need to be 10 to and 4. It could be morning and night. It could be your lunch hour. It could be, you know, first thing in the morning. Whatever you're going to do, but, but set those times to deal with your email. Your email, at least in my world, ends up being a huge distraction. When you get Outlook in the default setting, it uh, puts every email that comes into your inbox in a box that shows up in the lower right of your screen and then vanishes. You tend to look at that, and uh, oftentimes that takes your focus away from what you're doing. So if you jump into the email alert settings, um, you can certainly set those different ways. You can set it so it just uh, uh, creates a change in your point, or you can set it so it doesn't uh, bother you at all. But I would encourage you and caution you that you don't cert you don't want to turn off the those important emails, the you know those from your boss, those from your your family, uh, your significant others. You can set those with you know, an alert or a special alert. Same thing with your phone. I would uh, I would encourage you to do that. Also, if you haven't, and again, there's several. And when I look in the chat, there's uh, a few suggestions that have come out that we'll go up, uh, go over at the end. But there's many, many of those uh, apps out there to help. But for example, if you take a look at Slack, that's something you can enable on your devices. And it actually allows for instant communication between a team. I use this. Um, I had a statistician helping me with some of my um, work to try and get that final dissertation push done in the last six months or so. And it wasn't going well And that I was waiting till the end of the day to get back to him. He would have a question. He couldn't um, do some of the analysis or, or ask the questions without some direction or feedback from me. Uh, his proposal was to try Slack. I wasn't familiar with it, but actually it, it worked incredibly well. And I got that you know, urgent pop-up message and we dealt with it. And then <clears throat> um, certainly all of us, when we get in in the morning, usually the first thing that most people do is check their email. I would say the best thing to do is take a look at your list before you start that triage. So take a look at your list, take a look at what's on your week, on your day, and make sure that you have you know, a, a good focus before you set in for that initial triage. When you do that triage, if there's those simple things that you can get off your plate by a quick reply now, I'd encourage you to do it. Don't. Uh, put a check mark or a red flag by it and follow up tomorrow or follow up next week. If it's something that you can easily clean up, do it. And then, of course, we all know to be very cautious about replying to all those. Uh, we probably each have a story about how that has come back to bite us. So uh, those are a couple things. Another thing that you often see with uh, people CCing everybody on an email or CCing a group of people is they tend to make a case with emails as if they're in a, a trial or a litigation and they want to have a trail that they can go back and take a look at. I'd caution you to uh, away from making a case with your email. You know, conversations are quicker, stepping down the hall, picking up the phone. Those are things that uh, are less uh, apt to be misinterpreted. And they certainly don't leave that trail of, uh, you said this, therefore that. So I'd encourage you, again, a, a corny uh, reference to 
ancient times, but I encourage you to you know pepper your email. Uh, number eight would be for you to transition or add a door ajar policy to your open door policy. Again, that's uh, we'll apply more to our company officers, to our uh, mid-level managers, to our fire chiefs. You know, we <clears throat> oftentimes want to make sure that you know those that work with us, those that work for us, know that uh, we're available, uh, that we're concerned, that we're willing to help. Uh, but oftentimes, a wide open door leaves uh, an open invitation. And if you've got urgent items to get taken care of, if you're in the middle of uh, triaging or re uh, responding, or refining your list, I'd encourage you to you know close but not latch the door. You know, a, a door with a small crack in it says to somebody walking down the hall, you know, yeah, I'm available if it's important. You know, come on in or knock and I'll be there. But I'd encourage you to, you know, step away from a blind, you know, open door policy that anyone in your organization can step into your office at any time and take a half hour, 45 minutes of your time. You know, there certainly is time for that and you certainly need to make that available. But uh, another just tip that we tend to use around here are small whiteboards either right outside the door, on the sidelight, or on the door. Uh, just basically, you know, some magnets or notes on there that would say, you know, in a conference call, on a webinar, uh, working quietly, feel free to interrupt. Those sorts of things really help in communicating out there. And then I'd also encourage you to Respect the other side of that. When your door is open, be, be available, be present. Um, when people come into your office, if you've got the luxury of having a you know a small table to sit and talk with them, uh, step out from behind your screen and be be present in that moment. And I think as um, as fire chiefs and certainly as company officers, oftentimes we get so tied up in the business, and if we tend to sit behind our desk when we're talking to somebody. Um, our eyes and our thoughts often wander. Um, item nine would be to get started. You know, my grandmother used to tell me it's later than you think. So you need to get projects started early. You need to start on your list relatively early because the last minute is rarely there. Last minutes are always uh, taken up by an event. If you plan on having a day to finish or an hour to wrap things up, uh, that will happen when the wildfire breaks out and you end up um, on a deployment. So be cautious of putting things off for the last minute. Also, don't you know fall in love with processes. Some of these um, apps and ideas that we've thrown out here are intriguing. It's just like you know surfing the internet. You can start. Uh, looking for a template for a memo and end up, you know, 15 minutes later uh, on Amazon looking at something else. So just be careful that you don't fall in love with process or fall in love with applications or um, electronic concepts. So just as in, you know, track and field or BMX bike racing, you know, strong starts win races, especially sprints. So concentrate on, on getting going. I'm not saying that you don't need to finish strong, but uh, that strong start will get you off on the right step. And then ideally, you know, use that 11th hour to relax, to gather your thoughts. Um, one of my uh, good friends, Chief Emmett Still, gave me some advice. And it, it took me aback when I first saw it, when he um, heard I was, I was training for Iron Man in Arizona, he said, well, good luck to you. You need to make it to the starting line. And up to that point, I had been thinking, you know, I need to make it to the finish line. I've put, you know, time and energy and all of that into finishing this race and making that accomplishment. Uh, but he really helped me to reframe that. You know, I needed to make it to the starting line healthy and able to compete. So I think getting to that point in your life really makes a lot of sense. So I would encourage you to get started because time flies and it is much later than you think. 
And number 10, this certainly could be the most important, would be to uh, use those precious scraps of time. Uh, I was lucky enough to do a staff ride uh, with Omni International uh, last year at Gettysburg. And Eric, one of their instructors, often talked about you know these precious scraps of time that we're all given. And it depends what you do with those. That's what really makes a difference, in my opinion, uh, from those that are incredibly successful, those that get a great deal done, and those that you know tend to uh, just get by. So I would encourage you to mobilize or to use those precious scraps of time. You know, I talked a little bit about multitasking. I don't think in the mind that works for me, but it certainly works on a, on an elliptical or on a, um, a stationary bike or on a computrainer. So when you're, you know, your body's at work, you can certainly use your mind to sort through things. You know, oftentimes uh, a quick run in the morning or a quick run in the afternoon will help you to sort things out. You know, we've all set. Sometimes our best ideas come in the shower. Sometimes they come in a dream. But basically, you know, it's okay to uh, use your mind while working out your body, and that's that's a good way to double dip or to get some of those benefits. Um, I'm not. I wasn't up until probably a year or two ago a real voice recorder guy. I I thought it was a little corny, and anything that I recorded rarely if ever was even listened to. Um, I tried to, you know, keep uh, tallies on projects just like I worked in, you know, construction, we would do punch lists on that. But the problem was always translating that into something I could use. Um, one of the executive uh, coaches that we use uh, suggested I try this system out there you know, are on the internet to do work. Uh, where I used it was to transcribe a bunch of interviews from my dissertation. So basically, for just a few dollars, uh, you can have these voice files uh, transcribed into a Word document. So it seems to be hard for me to, to transcribe a one-hour interview. It would take me you know, four hours of of typing. Um, there was a, a, a transcriptionist that I ended up contracting with, you know, that could do the same thing virtually in real time. So she could transcribe an hour's worth of two sided conversation in about an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, you know, her rate was 12 bucks an hour, and uh, I would have it back by noon. So, again, it's certainly not going to work for everything, but if you have, you know, those meeting minutes or you have those items, uh, policies, and procedures that you want to get out there, you might want to consider you know, a, a $50 voice recorder and a, a few dollars uh, invested in some of those um, freelance services that are on the internet. The other thing I would say is you know, use those precious scraps of time, whether you're sitting on an airplane, sitting in a waiting room, uh, use those precious scraps of time to get things done. Don't throw those away. Um, so I. A lot of times you need to plan ahead. You need to bring a tablet with you to a meeting. Again, you've got to be careful that you're not uh, distracting yourself to a point where you're not present in the meeting or not present with those you're with. But there's plenty of, um, of downtime, plenty of breaks, that if you can get five minutes here, 10 minutes there, it really makes a difference. And then I'm also a, a big editor. I tend to print things out five or six times if I'm doing a you know, for a promotional exam, I've got to uh, produce a document. I'll tend to, you know, write it, refine it, um, update it on a computer, reprint it, mark it up again. So I tend to, to to produce a lot of paper in that area. So if I know that I'm going to be, you know, sitting on a plane for a few hours or, or doing those sorts of things, I certainly uh, plan ahead and print those copies and, and mark them up. So as we kind of wrap things up, I wanted to uh, just throw this out. This isn't a commandment, but it certainly um, means a lot to me. You know, the best thing you can do is smile and have a great day. You know, it tends to frustrate those who want to sidetrack you, who want to 
uh, to throw those monkeys on your back. You know, life is far too short. We're in a uh, profession where far too many of our colleagues end up with their careers cut short by injuries, by illness. Uh, we need to take time and spend time with those people. Uh, as you know, when you go on vacation, uh, you show back up on Monday morning after being out of the office for a week, uh, there's a stack of emails and there's a stack of paper on your desk. And that will always be there. There's no way you're ever going to catch up. So I would say by triaging and being deliberate in how you're doing things, um, you can get done what needs to get done. And then just accept the fact that there's always going to be a backlog of work. And do things while you can. I would encourage you to you know, take care of of your family, to take care of yourself, take care of your department, and then if there's some time left to do a, a once around here and then we'll jump into some questions. But uh, commandment number one was number two. So thou shalt put thyself first. Number three, thou shalt triage. Use those EMS skills you learned. It start triage. Uh, leave those projects, those ideas, those concepts that are dead. Uh, leave them alone. Those that are walking wounded, those that can take care of themselves, those that you can delegate, those that you can use uh, transcription service for, those that you can uh, freelance out, uh, get those off your list. For the yellows and reds, come up with a plan. Uh, for those reds that need life-saving interventions right away, take care of those those quickly. Uh, commandment number four would be thou shalt make and maintain an e-list. So clear the decks of those greens and blacks. Get them off your list. Focus on the top ten. Keep that rotating list to no more than ten or whatever your magic number is. Make sure that it's a living document, that it's always accessible. Use some of those uh, apps that are out there, uh, iCloud, use Todobot, use Slack, use whatever you can to make that work. Uh, item number five, or commandment number five, would be to set and maintain a schedule. Put those, put those items that have deadlines in red letters, put those there and maintain that schedule. Look for opportunities to double dip. Look for those items that fill two buckets and take care of that. Uh, commandment number six would be to um, enjoy the white water. Remember why you got in this job. Remember that false summits can be deceiving. Things won't get better when, when you get to the calm water. Try to enjoy the white water that's in front of you. A little bit of stress can help to add things, add to your uh, fuel for your fire. Uh, as my my friend Rocco Snor taught me, you know, if you have, think you have too many irons in the fire, you might want to consider building a bigger fire. Uh, commandment number seven would be to that thou shalt pepper your email. That would be to do a quick triage in the morning and then set some times to uh, focus and get things done. You can use 10, 2, and 4. You can use morning, noon, and night. Uh, but don't let email be a distraction. Make that modification and outlook so that you're not constantly disturbed by you know, every vendor that has a new uh, CPR uh, adjunct tool that, uh, that comes into your inbox. Uh, doesn't need to be a distraction for you. Also, don't you know, make a case with your email. Walk down the hall, uh, 
make that contact and don't be afraid to pick up the phone. Uh, commandment number eight would be modify or add a door ajar policy to your open door policy. The, you know, remember door control just isn't for fires. A door that's cracked uh, sends a message that if it's important, you can come in. You know, if you really need to concentrate, shut the front door. I'd encourage you to, you know, Put a note out there, say, uh, busy working on a project, and fully focus to increase your productivity. Uh, commandment number nine would be get started. It's later than you think. Uh, the, you know, the mile of, or the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. So I'd encourage you to quickly get that and that done. Last minute Spanish and then try to use that 11th hour to gather your thoughts and relax. Uh, commandment 10 would be to use your precious scraps of time. Uh, look for opportunities to uh, use your mind and body at the same time. Uh, do markups on the stationary bike. Uh, consider a voice recorder. Consider using uh, Elance or Upwork to get some of those mundane tasks off your plate. And then don't throw away the seat time they, that's given to you. And with that, um, that is what I have for today. And I'm going to give you back about 13 minutes of your precious time. We finished a little earlier. And I certainly thank you for your time. Let's take a quick look through the chat here and see if any of this. Um, I think one of the concepts that came out, and Jamie, you can jump back on if you want. Um, Kanban flow, K-A-N-B-A-N-F-L-O-W, uh, was another tool that was suggested uh, similar to um, the to-do bot or the, that electronic to-do list. So with that, Unless there's anything else, I would all thank you very much for your time. And as I said, uh, please don't hesitate. Like I said, uh, this is just a way to do it, just a, a concept that's out there. It's certainly not uh, uh, me preaching or, or, or stating it's, it's the way to get things done. It's just a system that's worked for me. And again, thank you so much for your time. And please reach out to me. Uh, Kevin Milan at me.com if there's anything I can ever do for you. Thank you.